everybody's singing, enjoying life. And now this, how can you trade DeAndre Hopkins for a two, a four, and a who? Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Houston Texans franchise here on Next Gen Madden 21. Now, we have been ready for this series. We've contemplated a couple of teams, and it really came down to the Carolina Panthers and the Texans. We decided to go with the Texans here because the Panthers are being done already by my boy Big C. Got game. Go check out his channel. And let's just hop into this series. Now, the Houston Texans have two big draws. Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt. That's literally it. And Watt is actually on the last year of his contract next season. But Deshaun Watson's got a whole lot of football left in him. Only 24 years old. One of the best quarterbacks in the league. And he doesn't have much help. The DeAndre Hopkins trade pretty much depleted this roster. Now, I'll explain why. David Johnson came in, but he's not even a top 50 running back. I mean, he's number 50 ranked right now as far as ratings goes. But besides that, I mean, we didn't get too much back. I mean, we are depleted with draft picks here and a lot of other pieces to put around uh, Deshaun Watson. So we're going to have some work to do here. Now, I will be starting out with this dynasty in week 13 where we are resuming in real life. So in this first episode, we will, we will be going up against the Colts a little bit later. But let's just talk about the roster here. Our running backs are actually not bad behind David Johnson. We have Duke Johnson, who's a pretty serviceable back. And I think we have at least some good offensive weapons to start out, especially with some speed, starting with Brandon Cooks at receiver. He is a number 22 ranked receiver, and he's going to be on track to have maybe one of his best years of his career in real life if he keeps going on the pace he is. But then there's Will Fuller, who is going to be out for the rest of the season. He is suspended, and I don't know if we're going to resign him, to be honest. I think I'm going to let him walk. Well, Randall Cobb is also out for the season, and we're going to have one more year of him, but he is getting up in age. He's going to be age 31 when he does hit the field for us. So then we look, or look to the newer guys and the younger guys. Kiki QT is one of them. He is a smaller receiver. He could also maybe play a little halfback if we really needed to. Only 23 years old. But the one guy I really like on this roster at receiver is Isaiah Coulter out of Rhode Island. A rookie. Honestly, his ratings aren't bad. I think his route running is down. But everything else, like his catching, catching traffic, is actually pretty good to start with for a guy that wasn't even close to being a top pick. So then we will move over to tight end, and I think we need some younger talent here. Darren Fells is our best guy, but he is 34 years old. Jordan Akins is there. He's in his upper 20s. I'm not really intrigued by any of these guys. We also have Waring and Brown, but I don't see any of those guys really being a part of the, at least the long-term future of this tight end core. Now, our only big bright spot on the offensive line is Laramie Tunzel. 26 years old, 89 overall. He's going to be there for probably the duration of this series. We'll have to see, but he's our only piece because looking at every other position, we have Sharping at uh, left guard. He is not that good. Bottom five in the league at his position, Nick Martin. Same equation here. Bottom five at his position, number 26 overall. Doesn't do too much too well. He pass blocks a little bit, but not as impressive as anybody else in the nfl zach fulton number 25 we get a little bit better there but not much very very bad offensive line we're gonna have to improve this quite a bit and we're gonna have to work on that in the off season coming into season number two because remember we're gonna get through this season pretty quickly because we're starting out at week 13 but titus howard has been kind of a failure to be honest at right tackle now, like I said, the one bright spot of this defense is J.J. Watt. I guess we have a couple of bright spots. We'll get to those. But the biggest bright spot, I guess, J.J. Watt is in, in his 30s now, and I just don't know about him. I mean, do we keep him or do we trade him? I think that is going to be the dilemma. Now, I, if I do trade him, I will not be trading him for a draft pick. This draft, it'll be for the next draft. So in Season two's draft, we will possibly get some picks for him. But that is a big if. I'm not sure what we want to do there. Let me know down in the comment section what you think we should do 
with J.J. Watt. Now, looking at the young guys we have behind him, we have Carlos Watkins, who's decent, Andrew Brown, who is decent, but these guys are all in the mid-60s. They're going to need some development. So I think we're going to need to draft some defensive linemen because looking at our def defensive tackles too, Brandon Dunn is not as good as what you would hope for for a 27-year-old a uh, few years in the league. He is number 79 ranked defensive tackle. Definitely not impressive at all. But we do have Ross, B Ross Blacklock, who will start at nose tackle. So he is a rookie they drafted out of TCU in the second round. He is going to be a guy that can, that will contribute right away. Now, we do have a lot of injuries on this team, and that's kind of the reason why they're having a down year, just to be combined with the DeAndre Hopkins trade. But, but we do have a good middle linebacker, I think, in his mid-20s, and Zach Cunningham out of Vanderbilt. He is very, very athletic and he can get after the football, and he actually has good play recognition right now at 86. I think that's something we can work with, and I think that he is going to be a part of the future of this team for sure. So we're going to have to build around him in the middle of the defense, I believe. Now, looking behind him, who are the younger guys that will also be competing for some playing time there? I'm not really sure. We have a lot of guys on the roster there, so we'll have to kind of do our own little scouting of our own team and figure out who's going to be on the team in the future and who's who is. So Whitney Merciless at right outside linebacker, I believe he has one more year left on his contract. I could be wrong there. He could be a free agent next season, but I think he has one more year left after this one. But then looking at our cornerbacks, Bradley Roby and Gary on Conley both out for the season. So we will have to rely on Vernon here Greaves, who's going to be our number one corner along with Philip Gaines. And then there's Crossan who, who also will play on the outside a little bit as well. I don't see any of these guys being overly impressive. Honestly, they're going to have to show up in the last few games to really show me what they can do. But we do have John Reed out of Penn State, who is a rookie. We're going to look to get him some playing time as well. He and Crossan are definitely going to get some playing time just to see what I can get out of both of them. Now, at free safety, Eric Murray is actually not a bad player. He is 72 overall, but is he a starter? I'm not sure. I'm going to need to see something out of him in these last few games to really, you know, for me to really commit to him long term. I think that he's a good player, not great. But at strong safety, I really, really like Justin Reed. He is 23 years old. I don't see him going anywhere. And I think that maybe he can be the leader of this defense once J.J. Watt leaves. Who knows? I think it's going to be between him and Zach Cunningham. I guess we'll have to see. Very, very good zone coverage right now as a 23-year-old. Good man as well. So if we really wanted to play some cover zero packages, we can definitely play him there. And then a guy I'm looking forward to developing is Lonnie Johnson. He's still very young at 24 out of Kentucky in his second season. He has decent zone. I think we can just improve him all around, but I think he has the athleticism at least to play a couple of positions at defensive back. And then just talking about our draft picks, I mean, our first pick in this year's draft is a fourth rounder. We have a lot, actually a third rounder. We have a lot of work to do. We have a couple of fours. I think we have a couple of six as well. So we'll, we're going to have to see how this goes. So Madden doesn't have the feature to resume from real life, so we actually did sim, and it's actually pretty close. The Texans are 4-7 and seven in real life. We end up being 3-8, and eight, and with five games to go, two versus the Colts, Bears, Bengals, and Titans. We will see how this season goes. It's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to be learning the roster as we go as well, so forgive me if I don't know everybody on the roster. So we'll have to see how this team shapes up here in the last five games. Going up against the Colts here in the first matchup, Phillip Rivers actually having a down year here in this Madden Sim, but having a pretty good year for the Colts in his first season with them. So let's get this franchise underway as Fairbairn gets us going as the Colts start out with the ball, and out comes Phillip Rivers, maybe in his last couple of years as a pro here, and he takes over from Andrew Luck's former team, 22 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Let's see what we can do here in the first episode of this series. So Phillip Rivers starts out under center this time. We are going to be controlling the defensive tackle the entire way. So we don't switch on defense. We allow the ratings to 
really shine for themselves and allow players to really play above their ratings on their own. That's the way I run my series if you're new to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy it. It allows guys to actually have personalities. I mean, there's going to be guys that are in the 60s overall that are playing like 80 overall guys and guys are playing like 60 overall guys that are actually in the 80s. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this. No more controlling the middle linebacker like I usually do. We're going to control the nose tackle. And we will be playing on default all Madden to start out this series as well. So let's hop into the action. So Phillip Rivers, after a couple of good completions here, now set up at about the 37-yard line from the shotgun. Here's a handoff. This time, Naheem Hines, who is the maybe a couple of healthy running backs that they have on the roster right now. I know they uh, are missing Marlon Mack with an injury, but here they are handing it off. This time, back to Naheem Hines. And that is the first down tackle by Adams as it gets to about the 26. So here they are with four wide out there in a stack formation to the left side. And they throw, and that is, I believe, caught by Michael Pittman. And that is a first down to about the 16. Phillip Rivers looks good on this first drive. So here is Phillip Rivers now facing pressure and gets to him. It's Whitney Merciless. He gets in for his first sack of the game. And now we get them to a third and eight from their own 14. Here is Rivers this time. Done. Getting to him. He throws to the right side, though, and he finds Zach Pascal. And he's going to pick up about a gain of six or seven yards. And it ends up being a field goal. And out comes Deshaun Watson for his first possession of this series. So far, he's has 21 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, almost 3,000 yards. He's surely going to get that in this game. So let's see if we can use this speed because we got a ton of it on the field. We have Coulter, Cooks, and QT. That's a whole lot of speed at receiver. Here we are, first and 10. The first throw is out to left side to D Duke Johnson. He goes up and gets it, and we get a first down. The first completion goes for a gain of 18. That was a little bit of a risky throw. We're also still getting used to this next-gen gameplay. It is a little bit different. It's not, you know, earth-shattering different, but it definitely plays a whole lot different. It feels a lot different. The movement's different. So you will see a little bit of that in this game. Here's the first pass across the middle, and that is caught by Isaiah Coulter. One of those guys we're looking forward to developing here out of Rhode Island, the rookie, picks up the first down. So first and 10 stretch play this time to about the 48 at the stop and a gain of nothing. David Johnson can't get going yet. So second and 10, quick throw. It's Isaiah Coulter again. Another catch for 10 yards, and that eventually picks up the first down. So nice start to this drive. This time is Deshaun Watson moving, throwing on the run, and he's got the first catch of the game by Brandon Cooks. I like what Brandon Cooks brings to the table. He is a smaller receiver, but that speed is definitely a difference maker as that brings it to a third and eight this time. Deshaun Watson moves, throws to the right side. He's got Coulter again, and it looks like he will fight for the first down. And another catch for Coulter. He's got three on this drive. So now we're inside the 10-yard line. Here's a handoff. David Johnson, big hole, opens up. He gets inside the five and two about the two-yard line for a first and goal. So now from the two, we bring a fullback in here. We pitch it out to the right side. David Johnson gets a block. It looks like it's a foot race to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. But wait, there's a flag on the play. This one is coming back, holding on the offense, and that's going to be on our fullback we brought in. So now we start the second quarter here with the first and goal at about our 12. Here's a throw to the right side. Coulter again. Four catches on this opening drive for the rookie, and it brings it to the one. Third and goal. Handoff. No, it's an option keeper. Nobody saw Watson keeping that one. It's a touchdown. He walks in, and that one gets us going. Here's a little bit of that next-gen update here. You get to celebrate with the crowd, and Watson gets in for the first touchdown of this series. So here we are back on our defense. This is a throw out to the left side, and that is caught by Zach Pascal again, picking up a first down. So seven minutes left here in the second quarter. Here's a toss play out to the left side. It's Naheem Hines who gets a block that time by Trey Burton and picks up the first down. And that moves it inside a field goal range. So six and a half minutes left now in the first half. This is Rivers in the pocket. He gets swallowed up. J.J. Watt was there. I believe Blacklock was also there. And we get the stop there, third and 16. 
at about their 40-yard line, at about our 40-yard line. Here is Rivers, quick throw. It's going to be caught by T.Y. Hilton, and he gets to the 30, and that one should put them into field goal range, though, but a stop on third down will force the field goal. But wait, it's a punt. I mean, it's a fake in here. Throw to the right side, and it's caught. Trey Burton on the sideline converts on the fake punt, fake field goal. I keep saying punt. But here they are now, another fresh set of downs, five minutes left. So new life given to this offense by the Colts in a throw to the sideline. Zach Pascal holds it in. So now they get it to the one, to a third and goal. Here's a handoff. This time it's Naheem Hines, and he gets in, and that's a touchdown, and the Colts score before halftime. Let's see if they leave a little bit of time for us to come back. Three minutes, 45. It should be enough for us to put together a nice drive. So here we are down 10-7 here with about three and a half to go from our own 26. Throwing on the run, and he's going to find Fells, but it's going to be just overthrown. Fells could have jumped up and caught that one. I'm not sure why he didn't. I don't know if he knew the ball was thrown to him. So here on our third and 10, here's a quick throw across the middle in traffic, and that is deflected. That was intended for Brandon Cooks. Maybe could have lobbed that one. That was wide open field he had on the right side. Nobody was over there. So here comes Rivers back on onto the field before halftime. Here's a quick throw, and that is caught by Hines on the sideline. And that will be a catch, bringing it across the 50 at the two-minute warning. Third and six. Quick throw across the middle, and it's caught by Burton, who breaks the tackle. He's now free inside the 10. First and goal for Trey Burton and the Colts. Moving the ball well on offense. Let's see if our defense can come up with the stop. So now at the one, they bring in Naheem Hines, hand off to him, and he gets stopped. But look at this. He shows some rare power. Touchdown running over Zach Cunningham on his way, and that one stretches this lead 17-7 to here. As now the fans are starting to get upset, and now down by 10. Deshaun Watson's going to have to show some magic. First throw is across the middle of the field, and it's caught by Darren Fells, who picks up a first down to about the 40-yard line. So now here we are after calling a timeout. A minute left. Throw to the right side, and it's going to be knocked away. Brandon Cooks was the intended target, and that brings it to a third and 10. Watson in the pocket all day to throw. Great blocking by our offensive line. Watson. Rolls and throws across the middle, and he's got Kiki QT for his first catch of this series. And it's a first down, 24 yards for him. And now we get it to about the 35. This clock continues to run. Watson in the pocket. He's going to throw in traffic, and it's just a bad throw. It's going to be picked off, and that one will be taken back to about the 35. Tackled by Deshaun Watson. That's going to be Blackman on the opposite end of that one, and that will end the first half. Just a bad decision on that throw by Watson. And now, 17-7, we have our work cut out here in the second half. So now we start the second half here with possession, and let's see what Deshaun Watson can do. His first pass is over the middle of the field. Brandon Cooks has got it with speed, and you can just see the difference. I think the gameplay next gen just seems a bit heavier. I kind of like it because um, obviously the gameplay is a little slower, but you also get realistic cuts. They don't just like make that hard cut and lose a couple of steps. And now they kind of you know turn up field. And it's kind of a realistic movement there. So third and four this time. Here's a scramble to the left side, and that is going to be barely picked up by Watson. It's a first down gain of five yards. So now at the 42, we're going to go deep this time. It's Isaiah Coulter, but it's slightly underthrown, picked off by the Colts at the one-yard line, tackled by Kiki QT at the eight, but it's going to be more. And I think that Watson just left a little bit under that throw, and now it's – Possession for the Colts. It's been all Colts this game. Is now here's Phillip Rivers back onto the field. A quick throw. It's Trey Burton who picks up a first down and more. He gets to about the 42 yard line. It's a first down once again for the Colts. So now here we are, five minutes left here in the third quarter. Phillip throws across the middle. It's Pittman again. He's got it. He's by himself. First down. It's a lot different now controlling the defensive tackle. We don't have now, you know, rain to make these user interceptions and stuff like that and guard people over the middle. Now it's going to be a lot more challenging. The play call is really going to matter. 
So here's a quick throw with Zach Pascal. He gets another catch and another first down as they get inside the 10 yard line. So now second and goal. Here is Phillip Rivers. He's just gonna take it himself on a quarterback draw. It's a touchdown. That was a call I would have never expected. Phillip Rivers takes it in from about six yards out and it's 24 to seven. So here's Watson now back it onto the field. He's gonna throw on the run. He's got an open man. It's Brandon Cooks with a lot of room. Makes the man miss. Gets to the middle of the field and it's a first down to about the 43. That's a nice throw by Watson on the run. And now we get it across the 50, set up here with three wide receivers and a tight end on the field. Here is Watson, this time throwing across the middle, and it's going to be, it looks like, pass interference. Brandon Cooks was the intended target. That's an easy call, and that was a third down as well. Bad timing on Rock Yassin. So now here we are at the six now. Deshaun Watson moves to the right side. He's got space. He's going to scramble and get to the pylon but he steps out at the one. He almost had his second of the day. So first and goal this time. Read option called again. It's going to be a touchdown. This time they weren't totally fooled. Buckner was there, but Deshaun Watson gets in for his second touchdown of the game. And now we're back to a 10-point lead here for, for Indianapolis. And now here we are in the fourth quarter. So here is Phillip Rivers now to start it out. Quick throw across the middle. That's a wide open T.Y. Hilton. He cuts up field and does get to about the 42. Big time play. That one puts Phillip Rivers over 300 yards passing in this one. And now they have it across the 50. And they're going to just hand it off here. Naheem Hines, but a tackle in the backfield. And that is a nice play that time by Uminahu. And now that gets it to the 43. Second and 11. Here is Phillip Rivers now. Quick throw across the middle. It's caught by Zach Pascal. And that one gets the first down right back after a loss on the previous play. So now here we are, Phillip Rivers now at the 12. Now a third and nine. Throw to the right side. It's going to be caught by Pascal, but a nice stop that time by Cunningham and a couple of other guys. And now we get them to settle for three. And now it's just a 13-point lead, four and a half to go. So here we are on the screen pass this time. It's David Johnson, and it's not going to work. Nice stop by the Colts defense, and that's a loss of five yards, actually. So now here we are, third and nine this time. From the shotgun, Deshaun Watson. He's going to load up. He's got a man deep, and it's going to be caught by Kiki QT. Touchdown. What a throw by Watson. Kiki QT shows off the speed, 73 yards. What a throw by Deshaun Watson right on the money in stride over the top of the safety. And that's just perfect. Kiki QT shows off the speed and is back down to a one score game. So now down by six. Here are the Colts back on offense. Here is a run and a stop in the backfield. That is going to be Blacklock again. And also Martin was there. A loss of two yards. So second and 12 this time. They play action fake. Phillip Rivers loads up, he throws deep, and it's going to be picked off. And that is a nice play by Crossin. One of those young cornerbacks on our team. He's 24 years old. You know, he and Reed in the secondary are going to be our young guys at cornerback that we're developing early on in this series. And it's a nice interception, setting us up to possibly take this lead. So here is Watson this time, starting out with a big time scramble to the left side. It's a gain of about 17, first down for him. So now we're about, about the 50-yard line at the two-minute warning. Here's Deshaun Watson. He throws across the middle, and he's got his man. That is caught by Cooks, and it looks like a face mask on that play will give us some extra yardage. And now we have great field position with under two minutes to go. 27-21. Here's a handoff. This time David Johnson gets to about the eight, and now that eventually gets us to a third and five. Here's Watson now, five wide out there, throws to the end zone, and he's got QT again, two in this game. It's a touchdown, his fifth of the season, and I think we found something with QT earlier, early, and now we just build on it, and now we have the one-point lead, 36 seconds to go. 
So what a way to start this series it would be. Here is Rivers, a throw to the left side, and he's got Burton all alone. He burns Martin. We had safety help over the top, but Reed finally runs him down, and it ends up being a big-time play for the Colts. They're now set up in field goal range, but they're thinking six. Here's a quick throw back to Burton. It's a touchdown. They may have left a little too much time for us, though. Three timeouts, 23 seconds left. That's more than enough time. Let's see if we can get into the end zone. So now here we are with 19 seconds left. It's do or die here. Watson from the pocket, moves to the left side. Nobody to throw it to. He's just going to run it himself, but he does get run down from behind by Buckner, and we call our first timeout. So 11 seconds left now. Watson moves to the right side. Nobody to throw it to. Oh, he just throws it all the way back across the field. It's an interception, and that one will end this game. Just a bad decision, but 11 seconds left. We could have thrown it away, but what can you do? We end up losing the opener here in the Texans franchise. 28 to 33, almost the comeback was complete. Besides that big time throw by uh, Phillip Rivers late in the game, we would have won it. But I gotta like the effort. I like what I'm seeing from the young receiving core. Definitely seen some things from them that may be happy going into this series. David Johnson didn't run the ball particularly well, only 35 yards rushing, but we have tons of speed. Brandon Cooks, QT on the outside, then Coulter on the inside. That is a whole lot of speed. One thing we lack is size, though, so if we go up against a physical team, maybe they might stop us a little bit, but I think we can use this speed to our advantage here. Crossin had the interception. He's out of Western Carolina in his third season. Only 24 years old, like I said. I'm looking forward to developing him. And then uh, J.J. Watt didn't make a huge impact. He had a half sack, but I did like some things that I saw from some guys. I like what I saw from Blacklock. He looks like a guy that's going to be a really good piece on the defensive line. And Minahu also made a good play in the backfield as well. But I think we have a lot to work with here and at least to evaluate in the last few games. And let's just see how this series is, is going to go. I am looking forward to this. This is going to be extremely fun, especially since knowing that we don't have an offensive line at all. They didn't block too bad in that game, though. But I am using the default uh, all Madden sliders. I'm going to figure out the slider set that I will use. But no next-gen sliders are really out just yet, so we'll have to see how that goes do have a couple of upgrades duke johnson is 26 years old he has an upgrade um i don't know if i'm going to keep him long term i think he's going to be a free agent this coming season so we'll have to see what moves we make so with four games left we have the bears colts Bengals, and titans it's all about talent evaluation at this point we're going to have to see how this goes but a decent start to this series we almost won but almost doesn't count so three and nine on the season we're looking forward to the last four games. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest.